live? Excellent. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to House Family Vineyards for another edition of our virtual tastings. It's another glorious spring day, as you can see from the wispy clouds behind me, the beautiful air that's uh, smog free, one upside of this uh, shelter in place. Not a lot of driving. But uh, so we're, we're going to move through a couple of wines today, primarily the Coast View Vineyards is what we're uh, focused on. So the uh, Chardonnay and the Syrah. So it's a 2016 Syrah, 2017 Chardonnay is what we're going to do. So if you have those wines with you, I encourage you to open those up. If you don't have those wines with you, open up something to taste along with me. There were some tasty notes that we went through last week of kind of how to taste wine, what I look for, what Jonathan looks for in critical tasting. But really what this is about is the hedonistic tasting of, of wine. So we'll go through the tasting notes of these. I'm going to open these up. Uh, today we're doing a, a cooking demonstration, so something a little bit different. We're going to be doing some pizza, and I know that quite a few of you out there have some pizza kits. I know that my buddy Tim in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, has his own pizza. He already sent me a picture of it a little bit ahead. You know, they're three hours ahead. That's okay, Tim. I'll, I'll, I'll let you let you let you go on that. But you made a nice looking pie. Uh, so we're going to be rolling out some pies live. I'm going to show you how I how I do it. Uh, you're welcome to cook along with me, or you're welcome to take notes and then cook dinner a little bit later. So I'm going to get the, the Syrah opened up first. That's going to take a little bit longer to open up. Red wines typically take a, a few extra minutes to open up. But I want to get that uh, get that open here, and yeah, that's a nice looking cork. As I talked about last week, the smell, I'm getting a real fresh you know, a wine smell. Uh, the varietal, I'm not getting that, uh, uh, you know, any kind of musty, musty smells on that. So that's that's a good cork. It's probably going to be a good bottle. Well, of course, it's going to be a good bottle. What am I saying? All right, let's get into the, the Chardonnay. Got a nice, nice temperature to it. Not too cold. Uh, I do like it. Uh, do like it cold, but we're sitting right at about 80 degrees here. Beautiful day. Uh, earlier this week, it was just, just really cold. Another good cork. That should be another good bottle of wine. So I'm going to pour a little bit of these in each glass. Let those open up. And again, I talked about last week, not pouring too much and smothering your wine, letting those aromas come out, giving them a little bit of uh, a little swirl like that, smelling them, getting you know some of those early aromas that, I, that I'm smelling out of there. Some nice lemon, uh, you know, fresh, uh, you know, kind of really fresh lemon, kind of you know, spring-like some minerality uh you know re really nice uh fragrance is coming out there wine will open up in a few minutes it's, it, it is it is a little cool so but uh you know as it warms up it'll it'll kind of uh some of those uh, aromas will start to volatilize and come out in there mm, syrah it's uh, definitely big uh more closed up uh meaning that uh, it's, it, it's kind of shy it's not uh, expressing itself uh you know immediately but by opening that up and letting it breathe a little bit, and that's why we do this, or decant wines, helps those to breathe. So I'm getting just you know, good savory notes, uh, kind of brown sugar, uh, you know, bacon, uh, bacon notes in there, some smoked notes, some of the toast of the woods coming through, which is nice to see. So I'm going to let those those wines kind of open up. And you may have noticed I didn't taste the wine. And, you know, I like I come back and I smell the wine you know, four or five times before I taste it, I really, 90% of what you taste is really comes through smell. So I really like to let the wines open up and get the full experience on these guys. So I'm going to let the, let those sit there for a minute, but because it's such a glorious spring day, some of you may be, maybe have, we're cooped up in some zoom meetings, hopefully not too long. And you got some sunshine today, get your vitamin D going. Uh, we're going to get a report from the vineyard, and I believe that Jonathan is on location in the vineyard. He's normally right here with me, but I, we've got him on location in the vineyard down there in Block 9, which is our young Merlot. Uh, he's going to show you how it's growing and, uh, and what it's looked like. In. So, Jonathan, are you out there with us? Hi. Hi. See there? Oh, there you are. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? All right, I can see you. You're 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 in the weeds, Jonathan. Are you okay down there? You're not. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jim. Young, yes, yes, I'm okay. You know that whole All video right. and being like a being like a, a YouTube uh, celebrity that that's not good for me. So I every now and then I go back down here in my happy place, being among be, be among my vineyards, my vines, and um, literally ground myself by uh, getting my hands into the dirt. And um, um, yeah, so I um, still know where I come from and what's important. So yeah, as you said, this is our young Merlot, uh, the block uh, nine. I'm at the bottom of it. And what I'm going to do, um, so behind me is the vineyard and I'm going to switch the camera around and I hope you guys will be able to see how steep this block actually is. So I hope it's working now, let's see. So this is block nine. Um, as I said, I'm at the bottom of it. And so you can see this is a post and just by the angle, these wires going uphill, you get an idea how steep this is. And uh, there's my tractor over there. Um, and what I wanted to show you, um, we talked a little bit about the green manure, the cover crops we're using. And I have two rows here. I don't know how well you can see that. So this row we mowed a couple of weeks ago because there was all the pruning wood. And in order to chop that up, we used to uh, we use a mower. But the other rows, so we, used, we mowed every other row, but then the other rows, we let the cover crops grow really high. You can see that over there um, in that picture. Um, there the cover crops are really high. Um, and um, um, what's now happening is now I'm going to disc those down. It's a disc plow I'm using to get those down um, in order to um, give the vines more uh, room to breed, uh, to breathe, but also in order to bring the nitrogens from the cover crops back into the ground for the vines. And you can see this row here, I just uh, plowed with a disc plow. I just came down here about 10 minutes ago. And um, uh, you can see how it flattens everything out. It scars the surface a little bit. And you can see all those beautiful roots here from the cover crops, how they're really crumbling the soil and penetrating it. Here is a very nice piece where you see how it's completely interlocked with like roots. And do you see these like three little dots here? That's, um, um, that's those little um, nodules uh, where the bacteria lives that fixes um, nitrogen for us. Um, so we don't have to use any artificial uh, uh, fertilizers. And the good thing with the disc plow is it doesn't chop everything completely up. So um, all the beneficial animals in those cover crops have a chance to survive. Here is a little ladybird, if you can see that. Um, a ladybug, I mean, um, that survived. I can't hear um, whereas in the mower, these guys often get chopped up. So um, it's a good thing if we don't mow as much. And so I'm trying to mow only every other row and the rest I'm using the disc plow. But it's obviously about the vines. And so here is a young vine, um, Merlot, Great. planted um, uh, three years ago. And um, you can see um, the, the, the system is called VSPR, so vertical shoot positioning. We have one shoot from last year, which we bent down. And now the new shoots are emerging from here. And this guy here, this is actually an inflorescence. So this, are, this is a flower bud, or it's actually a accumulation of many flower buds, about something around 100. And each of those will later become a berry. And um, so already now I can make an estimate about, uh, a rough estimate about the crop. So this will give me like a big juicy cluster. This will only be like a little one. So this is a young vineyard, so it will not have like full, um, full crop level. There's also some shoots which don't have any clusters on them at all. Um, and so it's not going to be like a super heavy load, but we don't want that because the vines are still so young and um, not so strong. So we don't want to um, uh, overload them. Um, uh, and so we're probably going to thin out some of those shoots even. So you, for instance, here you can see there's like two shoots coming from a, from a bud. And so we will come along and take one out just like that. So we have a little bit um, less pressure on the plant. Um, yeah, other than that, um, I mean, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's growing very well. 
and um, uh, yeah, we're looking, looking for, looking for, um, looking forward for the next couple of days. Um, I hear that my video is frozen, unfortunately, um, but I'm also done. So I'm going to jump on the tractor and uh, join you guys up at the tasting room. See you soon. Bye. Oh, I guess I'm back. You caught me. I was I was tasting the wine. I was kind of enjoying that. But thank you, Jonathan. I hope you didn't get too buried down there in those weeds when you're down there. But you may have noticed that uh, I grabbed a couple of uh, couple of supplies while I was away. And uh, so we're going to get together here and do a little cooking demonstration. So uh, those of you that have the pizza kit, you probably have some uh, some uh, of, of our famous house family bread dough. And, uh, you know, this is pretty special to me. And one of the reasons it's, it, it's so special is this is another form of fermentation. And I just I just guess I really love fermentation. And this you know, it's, it's all about the yeast kind of and, and what yeast can do. And I, I love bread and, you know, with wine, it's, it just does such a wonderful thing. You know, beer, bread, wine, you know, just all, all the way through. It's a, you know, it's just a really fun with that, what yeast can do for you in the kitchen. So, and my, my kids, uh, I, I developed this recipe uh, over quite a few years and my kids are actually sick of bread and they kind of complain that I'm making bread, but that doesn't stop me. I'm still going to do it. And that's what I do as a chef. I run through so many different permutations of recipes. Sometimes I get on a brownie kick. Sometimes I get on a bread kick. Sometimes I get on a bolognese kick. And we may eat that. Just kidding. So here's what I have to work with. So he gives you the report from the vineyard. And then what's he going to do? He's going to drive his tractor. But at least you sent the dust that direction. So. Hey, everybody. He's back. So. I understand I understand the video is frozen. I'm sorry. Uh, we're trying it next time. <laughs> it's 80 degrees. I don't know why it would freeze, but, you know, things sorry. happen. Technology, you know, it's uh, we're, we're here in this uh, kind of little known part of the world that's not known for technology so so much. So maybe somebody out there could do something for us. I mean, it's, it's not as, I think that's the Silicon Valley back there, but I, you know. Well, we're just out in the vineyard, so. Guys, give me just one minute to change. Um, you know, I don't want to get any dirt on the floor, so I'll and... be back in a minute. Excellent. So while you while I was away, Jonathan brought me some really nice pieces of vineyard wood that, you know, from uh, vines that we tore out. And I threw these into the fire, kind of warming that up just a little bit. I like about a 500 degree oven. I'm going to be cooking in this pizza oven here. And so I actually threw some bread in here. So I've got a, uh, going to be a couple of baguettes that I, I threw in, but, and I'm going to show you how to do the pizzas. I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques. So if you want to work along live with me, great. If you want to watch, then uh, we can, uh, you can, you can cook, cook a little bit later. So I think I'm going to throw one more piece in. Yeah, maybe not. I'm approaching 600. I think I'm going to hold for, for a moment. All right, so I've got some I've got some baguettes that are in the oven. That one's got 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 a little warm on that one, so I'm gonna turn it. There's an example of what you don't want to do, but that's good crusty bread. I'm gonna pull that back out into the door. I always like to do a test first and uh, see how the oven's working. Oh, look at that! Huh. Hey, clean Jonathan. Da Daisy fresh, good as. All right. Maybe so, not quite Daisy. So I've got a couple of a couple of glasses here for you. Oh, awesome! And I'm so thirsty. <laughs> that you are. So I've got the Chardonnay. Oh, awesome! Go ahead, okay. and then the uh, Syrah, uh, right, right and, there. You and that's olive ahead. oil. I try not. To that drink. is olive oil. You don't want to don't want to drink that. All right. So let's get started. So uh, if you have the kids at home, uh, we're going to be working through the pepperoni pizza, a cheese pizza, and then our smoked mozzarella and chicken roasted garlic pizza. I think on the announcement we said that we we're going to do a burrata pizza, but you know, in this day and age of uh, supply chain uh, demand, 
Uh, we had a little bit of problems getting the burrata. It wasn't quite available. So we switched. We're going to do a smoked burrata, which actually will go really well with either of the wines. Uh, you know, the, the, the smokiness on the Syrah should, should work just fine, too. So let's get started here. So I hope you can all see that. We may go to another, another feed here. I'm going to kind of move these bottles a little bit out of the way. And we're going to get started here. So I'm going to get a little bit of flour. I, I like to get a little flour on my, on my uh, surface there to work with. Move it around with your hands. And then kind of like to get my hands a uh, little, little floury. Pull, pull these off. A little bit sticky there. It's not a problem. Good. Set that down. So you can work these one of two ways. Uh, I love a French rolling pin. And the thing about a French rolling pin is it's, it's, it's got this nice taper to it. So you can really push stuff out. Uh, and, and really make it a nice circle. Uh, so, you know, if, if I demonstrate with that one, I can get it really nice, you know, and round. And again, these are rustic pizzas. You know, nothing nothing has to be perfect about them. In fact, all that little imperfection, uh, you know, is places for, you know, the fire to cook it. And, uh, you know, so that's as easy as that rolls out. You can shape these by hand. You can, you know, hand stretch them. If you want to do them really thin, you can do them really thin too. So I could cut this in half, and maybe I'll roll one of those out in a few minutes uh, after I do this one, and we'll do it. We'll do a thin crust pizza. Check my bread, see how it's how it's going. I'm gonna actually pull this off. You can see it's it's starting to cook re really nice. Little little char here, not a big deal. But I'm gonna pull this off the bread pan and just stick it, stick it in the door here. Stick those there. Yeah, those vines. I hear. I heard you. You were uh, talking about the vines as firewood. Yes. They make like a crazy heat. They don't produce a lot of embers, so they don't. It's not like firing with hardwood, um, but they produce crazy hot heat. So it's great for if you want to char something quickly, like um, thin meats or something like that. Um, back home in Germany, we use those for barbecues. And actually, uh, in um, as soon as the tasting room is open again, we're going to sell the um, those. Uh, uh, those old vines um, as firewood if you want to use them as at home in your uh, barbecue or maybe a pizza oven like that too. Or smoking chips. It's great for that um, because they give you so much heat so quickly. The smoking chips, however, we're going to make from old, barrels. old wine barrels. That's a new idea we have. So we're going to send some wine barrels literally through a wood chipper and you can get those and then you can smoke some meat as well. Well, you ready to get cooking? <clears throat> Absolutely. Right. Coast View Chardonnay. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Hope you have wine open. Mm. Sorry, I had to drink a little bit earlier because. It's so this dusty. is today. Today for me is probably like the perfect day for the Coast View Chardonnay. It's just you know it, it's got really good acidity, 80 degrees. Just the perfect wine to be sitting here, uh, you know, drinking that. You know, not that there's anything wrong with the Syrah, but this is the kind of go-to wine for kind of for, for this temperature. This Particu moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Particularly if you've been, you know, working outside and, mm -hmm. you know, you're a little bit de dehydrated. A little parched. Back back when I get uh, started to get into viticulture, I worked with, uh, with a couple of old timers and they teach, uh, taught us young people how to do it. And so in the morning, our young, uh, uh, we young people, we ha were um, responsible for grabbing a case of wine, a case of wine in Germany is only six bottles, not 12, but a case of wine we had to bring out in the vineyards. And then these guys, nine o'clock in the morning, they would have their first wine, about three, uh, uh, two thirds wine, one third uh, um, like seltzer water. And they went on that mixture all day. And those six bottles were gone by the end of the day. Didn't that mixture get a little bit less? Uh, the ratio went down over the well, day. At some point we ran out of water and what are we supposed yeah. to do? I mean, Shocker. You know, yeah, exactly. So a couple questions out there. So shout out to Jim House. Shout out to Cass. Uh, I think Cass is out in Atlanta, or Georgia, uh, East Coast, another East Coaster. Uh, so Lloyd wants to know, hey, Lloyd, uh, wants to know if you could use a bottle of wine to roll this out. Lloyd, if you have a bottle of wine and don't have a rolling pin, absolutely. But I would recommend a Bordeaux bottle, which is at, that's a claret shape. That would that would make a better better rolling pin. Uh, you can certainly use it. Uh, you know, it's, you know, if that's what you have, you know, maybe a desert island kind of thing. And, you know, if you, if you're, you're stuck on a desert island making pizza and, and all you have is our house family wine, go ahead and use it. Lloyd, you don't have to go to, de uh, to a desert island. I remember in my student days, you know, back in college, um, I faced myself with the very same problem and I literally used the wine bottle to roll out some dough. So there you go. Totally did. Uh, right. totally did that. So, uh, 
So uh, another question is, is uh, what are what's the starter for the dough? So the, the dough, this dough is very simple, and we'll actually give we'll put a, send a link to the recipe. Uh, I may even do a quick video of how to do this. So this is based off. I, I developed this recipe probably over five or six years of of just kind of working with the, the local environment, the heat and temperature of my kitchen, the humidity, how you know how the yeast will grow uh, to develop it. Uh, you know certain bread flours. So this is I, I'm using a uh, it's called Power. Uh, so it's a it's a higher gluten bread flour sitting at about fourteen percent. I like a, a, a chewier tug uh, to the dough myself. And, uh, you know, you can use all purpose flour. People claim it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the same. I tend to find them softer and they kind of fall apart a little bit more. I like, uh, I like a little more tug to this. So this very same dough that I'm doing the pizza crust in doing these baguettes that we do right here at the, at the vineyard. So we use this, it's a very uh, well adapted dough. Uh, and it's the easiest thing you could do. I literally mix up a batch of it in about three minutes, throw it on the counter, let it sit for the day come out, roll it out. Uh, and I can take one of these, roll it into, uh, you know, just handle it, roll it and throw it in the oven. It's all I do to it. So in less than 10 minutes of my total active time, I can have, uh, you know, fresh baguettes in, in the oven or, you know, you, you can, you can work these and I'll, I'll show you a couple of recipes at the end, but let's get started with the, the pepperoni pizza. Yeah. The cheese pizza is, is very similar. So just, you know, get the sauce in and, you know, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of latitude here. It's a matter of preference, you know, how much, uh, how much sauce do you like? Do you like a lot of sauce? Do you like a little sauce? Uh, you know, what, 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 what are you, what are you going to, uh, uh, you know, what, what do you like? It's all up to you. So like a lot of cheese, little cheese, not a big deal. Pepperonis on there. Little heads up. If it's going to be a little bit crunchy, it's probably because of my, you know, hands. That's the There's terroir. Some, some vineyard in the pizza. So here, here's a couple things. So, you got, you got to make sure that the um, if you if you're working in a in a regular oven uh, that you want this pizza to slide nice and easy. So flour works uh, really well to make sure it's kind of like ball bearings for the pizza. Hope I don't fail at this first one. Be kind of embarrassing. It's like pancakes. The first yeah, one it's kind of like they're, they're 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 pretty soft. So we're gonna get this one in the oven. Uh, get it get it cooking. And slide off perfect, but it's all right. It'll taste great. Um, the other, the other thing you can use, uh, I brought, I brought along. If you have some cornmeal, cornmeal works works well. Put a little bit of cor cornmeal on that uh, on that peel, and uh, you know that that can help out. So we'll try cornmeal on the next one. So I'm going to do. Uh, so the cheese pizza would be exactly the same minus the pepperonis. So this one, I'm just going to stretch out by hand. So I'm just, I'm just going to kind of take it. Work it out by hand, kind of stretch it. You know, the old, the old, the old guys, do, you know, do the spinning in the air, catch it. You know, hand stretch it. You can do that if you want to try it. Don't pull a loose, loose, a loose steel ball. Throw it on your head. And then again, uh, you know, we could do. How about we do another one of these? What the heck? We'll do the cheese one. Rep represent those. See this one maybe maybe just a little bit lighter and then that one a little, yeah a little bit of parm a little bit of parm on the top you got some parm in there and i think i have uh what happened to my herbs so i like a little bit of uh you know a little bit of italian seasoning uh, you know on top of that yeah so the cornmeal works really well to it get those off a little bit better than the flour so if you have that uh that helps but if you're just doing a uh, doing it in the oven, you can put them on a on a, a cookie sheet, you know, or a, or a pan. Similar to this, you can bake them bake them right on there. You can bake them on the back side of this. Uh, either way, uh, that all works. So this one, maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll do the wine bottle. Method. How about that? There we go. So it works. Message up your wine bottle a little bit. So. This one here is we're going to use the roasted garlic. So what I like to do with the roasted garlic is uh, this is a staple in my kitchen is get, get, get the garlic in in the bowl there. Uh, and then I just kind of take it, mash it up just a little bit with a fork. Uh, if you really like whole pieces of garlic, you, you, you know, just you can mash this up as much as you want. 
puree it up. It's almost like kind of a, like a butter. Mix it up with the oil. And I bring bring that on. Just kind of work, work that around. Big chunks of garlic. Nothing wrong with that. The little missus loves that. Hi, hi honey, if you're out there watching. Promise not to eat too much garlic tonight. All right. Got the garlic on. Now we're going to get the... Uh, Little, little base of mozzarella, little base of uh, just regular shredded mozzarella cheese. I, I do a little bit lighter on this one because we're going to go with the smoked, uh, we've got the smoked mozzarella, about four or five pieces on that, kind of towards the center. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it will melt out. Got the, you know, a few pieces of the chicken, kind of spread those out. Keep in mind, I, I usually cut these into about four pieces. So you kind of want to represent all four of your pieces. And then, Got a little bit of chopped red onion. Sorry. It's all right. Turn my pies back there. A little bit of red onion and then a little bit of fresh chopped tomato. It tastes great on that. And throw a little bit of spice on there. And then what the heck, let's throw a little cracked pepper. Got, got that here. You have cracked pepper in your kitchen? Go for it. All right, got the pies turning. I'm gonna get th this one in and uh, we can let those cook for a minute. and. Uh, Actually, taste some wine. All right, so let me show you this pizza. This is about halfway through. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to, how about, is that, is that feed? Oh, yeah. I'm that feed? That's All right, good. you see that? That's see about that. halfway through. I, I think that's a little bit blonde. That's not, you know, exactly what I'm looking for. We did lose a few pepperonis off there on that first pie in the oven, but maybe we'll, let's throw a few more pepperonis on there to, to, to you know, spice that up a little bit. But it, it's starting, the cheese is starting to cook. Uh, I prefer, you know, this uh, when, when it starts getting brown and, 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 and crusty, uh, that's what I like. That's, that's what it's really tasting good. All right. Get those a little turn. All right. So what are you thinking about the wine? So we've had the we've had the coast view, uh, the uh, Chardonnay. Anybody oh, else who has out there who has the wines yeah. with us? Any comments so far? All right. So Lloyd, you asked me about the uh, the uh, starter for the dough. Uh, so this is a it's a very simple. It's just uh, it's an active yeast that I that I use: bread flour, salt, kosher salt, and water. This thing makes up real uh, really really simple. Uh, I mix it with a wooden spoon. I don't use a mixer. Three minutes, I'm done. Sits on my counter, sits all day. You can make it overnight. Use a little less yeast, and that yeast will grow and develop, make a nice colony, just like it does in wine. Uh, so yeast is a beautiful thing. What can I say? Uh, so, but we'll send out that recipe. So we got a, a couple. Oh, Michael Dean wants the uh, the thin crust. Thank you, Michael. You know that's you know, Michael Dean's my buddy that uh, that, that I make perform uh, you know all, all kinds of musical stuff. So now he's going to make me make a thin crust. It's like really hard so, oh, we'll do that for you michael we'll put that out there i just well uh, my mother is also on the ah. on the chat again so hi to germany again two o'clock there in the morning yeah thanks mom yeah all right jennifer your stomach is growling are oh, you cooking with us jennifer i yeah. hear you i mean that guy i mean it's better than last week because the food is, food is literally here now but i'm still starving so i'm gonna peek in on that while i let that develop in my mouth so, hey, Jonathan, tell me, yeah. what, what's some of your favorite stuff about, let's talk about the Coast View Vineyard. That's one, probably <laughs> one of my favorite vineyards uh, you know, out there. So what, what's some of your favorite things about the Coast View my Vineyard? My favorite thing about the Coast View Vineyard is that the Coast View Vineyard manager drives a Tesla. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I'm driving like an old Ford, so, you know, but, you know, there's... All you know, right. <clears throat> anyways. So Coast View, um, I don't know whether we have any pi pi pictures of Coast View, but Coast View is, it's amazing. It's mind blowing. It's way up. We always need to get the truck to get there with the four wheel, -wheel drive. drive. And um, it, it is um, the, the, many of the, of the vine rows sort of follow the curve of the, of the, of the hills. So they're not like, um, they, they don't go like downhill, but they follow, they're sort of like little terraces and follow the curve of the hill. So you have these like curved shaped vineyards. It looks almost like a labyrinth, like a maze from, from the top. Um, it's all organic. 
if you're on the top of the vineyards, you have this amazing view to literally the coast. That's where the name comes from, even though we're, I don't know how many miles inland. So um, it's, uh, so it gets its name, yeah, coast view. Uh, yeah. So what it looks, uh, when you're there, it's about 2,400 feet. So it's pretty high, uh, four wheel drive, Jeep trail all the way up to this vineyard. And when you're on top, you'll see the Santa Lucia Highlands just off to your left. And then you'll see the San, uh, sorry, the Monterey Bay kind of off center here kind of center and, and right right uh, so it sees the pacific ocean and it's just a gorgeous view it's just gorgeous exactly and, but what i love about this vineyard and this is something we're gonna employ is right. the sheep they so they they, they farm this with these short neck sheep and you know these guys they put their fruit zone up high enough that the sheep can't eat get to the grapes nor damage the vines they can sucker everything they eat all the weeds on the ground and as jonathan was talking about the sheep are only so high, and so everything follows the curvature of the earth just perfectly like this bonsai manicured vineyard that's just absolutely gorgeous. Right. Uh, wonderfully farmed vineyard. So I'm not 100% sure whether I want to, whether I trust any um, animals in my vineyards. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here. I even keep, I, I even keep a critical eye on the turkeys. Um, so far, I haven't seen anyone, um, any of them eating any grapes. At the moment I see a turkey eating a grape, well... Thanksgiving. We'll be doing a turkey special. Exactly. Um, but um, yeah, I, we're definitely going to try it with, uh, either with the like, short leg sheep or uh, sheep or for um, all the other areas around, we get some goats, right. which uh, we use to just like mow everything. And goats will literally eat the poison oak and everything, and they love it. And so um, that means less hours for me in the tractor and less diesel burns uh, for mowing and you know the goats um, keep love our it. Air clear here. Keep the air clear. Gives us maybe goat cheese, who knows, and certainly a nice, ro nice roast towards the end of the year. So win, win, win. Well, the goats, you know, but so we could do a goat cheese pizza. Goat cheese and turkey. To totally. I mean, oh, amazing. There we, there we go. All right, and so so we all win on this thing. So I have to bring these things out. These things are fast so if you're, if you're cooking with me hopefully your oven uh i guess i guess i should talk a little bit about the, the oven here if you're uh i when i cook at home i run about a 450 degree oven uh, i love to use if you don't have uh, a, a pizza stone it's not necessary but uh, if you have one they're great because they really hold the heat you can put them directly on that i use cast iron so i've got this uh, beautiful uh, uh rectangular griddle that my grandmother gave me and I, I it stays in my oven all the time and so it really maintains a lot of heat but again that's not necessary a, a cookie sheet will, will cook these just fine but a 450 degree oven is pretty standard you could go 500 that may move it a little bit fast uh but if just you oven, make them very thin then that's the higher temperature yeah, the higher thing. temperature uh, will really do it i'm gonna pull these pies out so now i'm gonna flip over here and let you see some of the the, the crust on that are we we in there there we are yeah uh, so awesome. so that is that's what that's what i'm talking about right there so that's out of a wood-fired pizza oven uh you can see that you know just really nice crust on there the bread uh, it's, it's all puffed up done there all right chicken, the chicken one i'm gonna let that cook just a, a minute or so longer there we go those things come out our, our, our bread's working well too Ah, oh, look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cooking nice. But I'm going to let that cook just a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, but, you know, so, you know, that's a, that's a baguette. It's got a nice crust on there. All right. All right, so we're getting, getting these cut up. Uh, so the, the, the pizza, so there we go. Look at that. Well, I guess you're hungry. Yeah. Well, obviously I'm hungry. So we're gonna try these things because I mean, you know, I, I made you so hungry last week. <laughs> Thought about bringing some steaks out. And we could, we could cook them. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. I haven't forgotten about those, and I'm sure you guys haven't either. He was he was talking about those beautiful steaks, and you know, and well, now we have pizza. Well, I'm not complaining, but um... pizza's looking awesome. <laughs> so you know, the pepperoni pizza, the Syrah, uh, probably just a you know, it's a it's a great combination with the. And the spiciness of the pepperoni, the sauce, 
uh, you know, the dough. I mean, look at that, you know, how it puffs up really nice. When I get done with this, I will roll out that thin crust. We'll, we'll pop, pop that one in the right. oven in just, just, just a moment. But you know what? We're going to taste these. All right. Cheers, everybody. Bon appétit. Those are hot. Mm. 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 You know, I've cooked out here so much, and, you know, I never get sick of it. This is like the best kitchen ever. Hey, just, it's right, not right. only the best kitchen ever, it's also the best office ever. It's general, you know, All it's right. an awesome place to work, um, you know. So, kind of hard to call it work, you know, but uh, there's days your back breaks, but <laughs> tough thing. But I think that's working really well. Uh, so, you know, the, the thin crust pizza, we can get to that in a moment. Got to, I'm going to pull the... Uh, Pull the chicken one out. Give that a taste. So, all right. That's coming out. Oh, wow. I don't know if we can get to, get to this feed over here. Are we on that feed? All right. Oh, we're right there in the middle. Somewhere. Uh, if you see that, don't want to lose that. So that, that's chicken and smoked mozzarella. Really nice crust on that. Oh, wow. Sneak that in there. Just making some space there. Oh, perfect. For the next... All right. All right, that one's looking. That, one's that awesome looks too. really good. So the mozzarella is really nice and creamy in there. Uh, this one, you know, the, with the Chardonnay. Thank you. Whole oh, half a pizza. All right. I'm gonna get a little bit more uh, of the Chardonnay. This one is uh, designed to pair with that. More of that guy there. Oh, yeah, really nice. You know, this this, this Coast View Chardonnay really goes uh, goes well with kind of a wide variety of uh, things. Yeah, you know, especially on a on a hot day. Uh, you know, there it um, is pretty versatile. Yeah, you there, have the acidity. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it so has also some up. some creaminess. So you know, it can also take something heavier like a pizza. So that, that that's why this pizza has got you know that the the the, the garlic in there. Uh, all, all the cheese, the bread, the bread crust. So it, you know, it's a rich dish. Yeah. But that acid is going to cut through there. So when you when you take that, it's really going to cleanse that palate and work with the you know with the pizza, uh, with the flavors that, that are going on in there. Uh, but you know, again, the the, the Syrah uh, I think would bring out some of the smoky notes uh, you yeah. know, of that. So let's give it a try. Oh, I burned my mouth. But uh, yeah, it, I think it's still so pretty hot. That, so. yeah, that that is definitely a Definitely a hot pizza. Yeah. So maybe cool cool those down a bit. I'm gonna give it a go. Mmm. Working for me. Really good. The only thing on a warm day like this, we should we re you really want to put the wine in an ice bucket or something mm -hmm. because ours is warming up already a little bit. Or the other solution, obviously, drink faster. Um, but, um, yeah. Well, th there, there is that. And, you know, we are standing in front of a 500-degree pizza oven. So, yeah, you know, there's there, there's a little bit of a challenge there. So, life is so hard, guys. I'm going to pass this over, clean this off, do a quick demo on, on the thin the crust thin pizza. Crust. We're probably going to need, would you give me less. about a, a half a, yeah. uh, give me a half a bowl there. Perfect. So, smaller, smaller ball there. Now, this really does require the uh, uh, the rolling pin. You want to make sure your uh, your your board is well floured. You notice I'm taking it, uh, working it a couple times, move, moving it over, turning it about ninety degrees, so I try to get a nice, consistent. Uh, uh, you know, try to get consistently round, but you know, and that, that gluten, you really see it wants to pull back. So this is, you know, it, it's really, you, know, you see, as soon as I do that, that gluten is, is strong. It's pulling that back. That's what gives that bread its tug, but push that out and then eventually get those uh, gluten chains to break. Kind of like tannin chains. That's why, you know, wine gets 
wine gets softer, you know, over the uh, o- over the time. Those tannin chains are breaking down. All right. Yeah. So pretty thin. Grab my peel. There it is. is. So this is really important on, on this guy to have it, uh, you know, some kind of good good lubrication on that because these thin ones they're they're pretty light. Kind of set it there. Make sure it kind of, you know, and, and, and I often test them. I, I want to see that it kind of slides on my peel. If you have one of those at home, if you're just simply making it on the, uh, uh, you know, on a, uh, a, cookie, a sheet. cooking sheet, then uh, you don't really need to do that. You can roll it out, put it on there before you put all the sauce on there. These I go real thin on the sauce and really try to spread that around. It won't go as thick because you don't have the bread, the dough to uh, ingredient ratio cheese a little bit lighter cheese you know if you have a little fresh basil you can throw those on you know you can throw a little little red onion so if you, if you got that stuff in there you know just kind of do what you want this is your pie kind of play with it how you want there's no rules here if it looks good to you and you dig it do it slide that in we maybe need another one of your uh your, your boards in there my wine, yeah. my vines. Yeah. Stick that in and get that get that fire stoked up. We'll get that cooking. So, uh, like to uh, shout out uh, uh, to uh, Laura and Jennifer. They're enjoying the Chardonnay. And um, a couple questions about next week while this pizza's cooking. We're going to be doing a little retrospective of House Family Vineyards, the history of kind of where we came from. So, uh, uh, Dave House and I are going to sit down and for a, uh, maybe a fireside chat and a glass of wine and uh, kind of talk about the history of House Family Vineyards, kind of how we came to be and, uh, you know, where, where this crazy little uh, operation came from, uh, you know, on the top of the hill and, you know, how it's, how it's come to be what we are today. So I hope you're all enjoying uh, these series, staying safe at home, uh, it, it, you know, enjoying the wines. If there's wines that you need, our website has it, housefamilyvineyards.com. If you're looking for our gear, get our T-shirts. Uh, don't have our hats yet for sale, but we'll get those up uh, as soon as we can get shipping in, and uh, you know all, all kinds of stuff. So we've got uh, you know some, just just some fun stuff out there. If you need more supplies, you know on this, uh, we can certainly supply them. Uh, the re- the recipes, we'll get those out to you for the bread dough. Happy to share that, as my friend Jim House says give them the gold and uh you know it's uh, you know it's just fun stuff to work with in your kitchen so one last question uh was about aeration of the chardonnay if i'm drinking uh, a chardonnay uh i don't i don't mind throwing it through uh an aerator Can somebody can we grab one of the uh, uh the aerators from uh that we use here in the vineyard see if uh we can grab one of those off, uh, from the set the set, our tasting room, you know, it's like, doesn't that, doesn't that yeah, sound yeah, professional? Yeah, it, it, it goes our to set. your head. That's the yeah. thing, you know. The other day I was delivering a little bit of wine to somebody and, you know, I dropped the drop, drop the, the wine delivery for, in front of their door, pushed the button and then walked away. And from the distance, I was like, hi, here's your wine delivery. And they were like, oh, thank you. And then I was like, wait a minute. Didn't I see you on YouTube the other day? I was like, yeah. Kind so, of famous. <laughs> What can we yeah. do, right? I mean, <laughs> yes, and, you know, it's what we are, who, what we do. But uh, anyways, yeah, so the, the aeration, you could run it through an aerator. You could run it through, you know, a small Venturi, open them up. But, but that, again, is what the glass does uh, naturally, uh, you know, swirling it like that, uh, you know, moving it around, uh, you know, opens it up. But if there's a, there's a wine that uh, may benefit from that, you could run it through an aerator. And, it, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic thing. So Jonathan's got... One of our aerators that we use here. Um, so you, we use these beautiful. Yeah. Kind of dem- demonstrate it. So it goes goes over the top of the wine here. Make sure this thing is. Yeah, the the I think the gasket. gasket. Yeah. Those things. Take those things. Put it over there, and then you just, you flip it over, drop it, and then it percolates down. And once everything is in the aerator, in the in the decanter. Then um, you flip the whole thing back, and so it will end up in your bottle. That's what we do with every single bottle here in the vineyard, at the tasting room. And um, so it has a little bit of this hourglass shape, um, and uh, looks very beautiful. Okay. You, you, your wine oh. is burning on my pizza, you know. Come on. Let's <sighs> so Well, this is a vineyard, not a kitchen. 
Hey, it's both. <laughs> Give me a break. All right. So, so you can we, see how it's bubbling down and getting a lot of oxygen. Um, all that exposure is really yeah, good to open up that wine. Really runs on the runs on the outside of the of the of the glass walls, and once it's all through, then you just flip it around and let it run back into the bottle, and then um, it so, really opens up. So I often say, you know, this is our water cooler, and we stand around the water cooler and, and, and talk, you know. So this right. is kind of our our, our office uh, that we let it do that. But these air, these aerators. Uh, I, I've actually bet people uh, at wine tastings, and uh, I've never lost a bet yet. But uh, I'll open a fresh bottle of wine and then pour that, and I'll pour one that's been aerated. And I guarantee it, they 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 would swear it's two different two different glasses of wine yeah. or two different bottles of wine, excuse me. And uh, it is just it's a phenomenal difference uh, there. And you do that with red wines, but you can do that with white wines as well. Let's give give that a try. I know we just tossed out wine but but you know it literally went back into the vineyards and yeah. i always say you know that's good for particularly the young vines so they have sort of like an idea where they're supposed to go it richened it up yes uh, definitely yeah like looking at that just that little bit of time fruit fruit comes yeah. forward a little bit more yeah got, got a little bit more uh maybe montrachet notes i think Woods coming out in it uh, a little bit more. Yeah, but uh, not unpleasantly. No, it's, it's not still very. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm I'm kind of tasting those those notes by opening that up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. In, in general, it's not um, it's not like red wines you decant all the time or aerate all the time, and white wines you do never. Um, it really depends on the style of the wine. If you have like really light, fruity uh, red wines, you probably don't want to aerate them. Or if they're very, very aged red wines, they probably did enough aeration uh, while they were stored in the bottle. Um, and at the same time, if you have like a strong, heavy uh, white, like a good Chardonnay with a little bit of oak, and it's still a little bit on the younger side, then you may want to open, um, open it um, a little bit in advance or even put it through an aerator. Um, on the other hand, if you have like a light spritzy Riesling, you probably don't want to do that. So, yeah. good tip. All right. Well, we've got we've got our uh, our Michael Dean special here. Yeah, it was a success. So. I would say we're all set and done and yeah. um, hungry enough. Yeah, we have food and drink. All right. And, um, we'll sign off for this week and look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers, right. everybody. Stay safe out there. Peace, guys. Cheers.